what is up guys my Kiki life here bringing you guys another video today for a how-to it's been a little while since I made a video so please bear with me uh, today Sony has officially released the PlayStation update for 3.50 this update brings up a lot of cool features such as when friends are online daily motion support uh, making yourself available online offline and of course the most anticipated one of them all would be the remote play for Windows and Mac. This is a super cool update you guys that they have released and I've had a lot of questions sent to me trying to figure out the configuration of this so I'm here to assist you guys with that. As you guys can see here in the screen this is the official webpage from Sony for the download for the remote play. Depending on what you have I highly recommend downloading your Windows or Mac. I have Windows so I download the Windows ones pre-installed in that. Basic general direction will be down here but I will be showing you guys pretty much where to take it after you download it for any questions, comments or concerns. Um, at the end of this video, if you guys still have questions, comments, or concerns, I'm going to leave a link to my Reddit page where a bunch of Redditors are trying to help each other figure out any solutions uh, for Mac and for PC. Anything you run across, most likely the answer might be there that if I didn't cover it. I'm just going to be covering the basic questions that most people have had today. So other than that, uh, let's get this video started, you guys. Okay, you guys. So on your PlayStation here, this is how you know that you're up to date with the current system. On the PlayStation 3.50 update, you'll actually be able to see that little blue dot next to your profile. That will be your profile, on the left the little blue dot represents that you're online. If you hold the home button and go into online status, you should be able to appear offline as well. That's how you know for sure you're on a 3.5 update because that update was only available on the new operating system now. Um, the reason we're actually on here is to go show you this on your settings. Before you make sure you activate the remote play, you're actually going to your setting options. You're going to be scrolling down into the remote play connection setting. When you're in the remote play connection setting, you have to enable remote play, enable the connect directly with PlayStation TV or PlayStation Vita. If you've already had a Vita, a PlayStation TV, or if you had a remote play already on your phone, this should be active already. If not, ignore this part of the video and you can go ahead and skip forward. Um, also, if you haven't activated that, make sure to do that. And then when you're connecting the settings right now, which I'll be able to show you later, um, Adding a device will give you that temporary token. Um, currently, I'm using the remote play right now, but if you click the advice, add device, it will give you a token that's about a six digit number that you could connect to your PlayStation's better. So instead of connecting through the internet, it will connect you a token so it knows that you're in the same Wi Fi as that as well. So it'll, it's a little bit simpler to connect. I recommend this way better. If you are in the same home, if not, you can connect over the internet as well. Okay, you guys, after you have downloaded the PlayStation 4 Remote Play and have enabled the Remote Play on your PlayStation and, of course, the connect directly to PlayStation Vita and TV, the connection setup should look like this. This is the this is the screen you should have on your computer, laptop, or Mac. It should be the same across all platforms. This will be the PS4 Remote Play. Um, it, will re it will ask you to connect a USB to your PlayStation 4 controller. To my knowledge, the Xbox controller does not work across platforms, so I it would recommend you to connect your, your DualShock 4 to your PC. It's as simple as a micro USB connected to your controller. The drivers install themselves, so don't go online hunting down some driver. It should install itself automatically. Both the Xbox and PS4 should do that. Um, once that's connected, it should let you hit the start option, but a lot of people oversee this problem here as well. It is a 540 native uh, resolution up to 720p. So in order for that, when you open this remote play option here, here in the bottom left, there is a settings option. You would hit the settings option. You'll be able to log into your PlayStation here so you can skip it on the next page over. Plus, you'll be able to change your resolution from 360p, 540p, or 720p, which is the highest they go right now at the moment. You really wouldn't want it higher than that. So a lot of people are complaining about 1080p, but I mean, at that high resolution frame rate, you would lag a lot. Um, of course, we recommend different standards for different um, internet connections. It is recommended a minimum of 12 megabytes, but if you are somewhere like at a cafe, a Starbucks, McDonald's, or so, a 360p just to get your game running with little to no lag would be probably the best resolution. Standard would be if you have good connection, but of course people are on it, and highs if it's pretty much yourself if you have anything at home over 50 megs and you really don't lag as well. A hardwired connection would be highly recommended for the 720p, but if you can't get that, that's perfectly fine as well. Your frame weight would be just be of how 
smooth your screen resolution is running as well so the resolution is just how pretty it looks the frame rate is how smooth it runs you get your standard or your high of course if you get high I highly recommend of course having a really strong connection as well um, another fun fact about this that a lot of people oversee is you need to make sure that your PlayStation PlayStation is set as your primary account. If you are not set as your primary account, you have the chance of it not working for you. Um, if you are sharing games, if you're sharing um, items, PlayStation Plus, and things like that with other players, and you are not the primary account, and it shows that you're logging into non-primary account, it will not let you play. Just to let a lot of you guys know, that should help help with a couple of you guys things for any game sharers out there this is very important information to know as well um, once your DualShock 4 is connected though the driver should install itself like I said you're setting a setup to where you want it so you could put it at 720p standard frame rate high resolution frame rate uh, make sure you're logged in all that good stuff you go ahead and click start it searches by nearby connections if on mine awfully quick because I had everything pre-connected the little bottom logo there it says when the place when uh, the connection to the PS4 is about to be lost the icon will be displayed that's if you're lagging your internet starts slowing down or if other people at home are using it as well um, you will get this error sometimes the internet connection speed is currently too slow to remote play don't let that bother you guys sometimes your internet fluctuates mine does that once in a while but then sometimes it works it should be working now actually yeah, as you can see here, this is pretty much how it's going to look. Um, it will lag sometimes. You will get that lost connection, depending on who's in the home. Right now, currently, we are having like about three, four people using the Wi-Fi at my home, so my internet is a little laggy at the moment. We have a couple gamers in the house, so it is going to not be the highest resolution possible. Um, another op here's your options on here. It shows you pretty much your controller. Now, options, PlayStation Share shows my controller is charging, and of course, full screen. Full screen will take up the whole screen, lets you enjoy the whole experience as well. So as you can see, there is some notable lag at the 720p. Like I said, it depends on your internet connection. Use what's comfortable to your native connection. If you know you don't have the fastest internet, don't try to stream this at the full resolution. Um, you will lag. It will buffer up it will give you some problems my PlayStation in the background of course is running perfectly fine but my game is running a little laggy so this is how pretty much it's gonna look you guys this is the resolution of the screen at 540p not too bad actually I have a 1080p monitor when I play my games on my computer and on my laptop um, extremely nice smooth play I haven't had a problem with it yet like I said there is some notable lag that all depends on your home internet connection so please play it smart don't be going 720p when you know your connection at home isn't the best and don't start getting mad as well because a lot of people will start raging and saying that of course it's Sony's fault when it's really just a home internet connection play it smart know your limitations have fun this isn't supposed to be mind changing experiences if you want full 1080p resolution with no frame rate no drops no internet problems you can play straight from your PlayStation take it on the go this is just for the convenience of the people that are busy have lives outside of home and can't really be at home playing video games all the time but like to um, it is a really cool fun update I really appreciate this from Sony they did a great job with it it is something that the community has been demanding for a long long time and that the follow through with it is actually really really great of them um, I'm just gonna knock out some quick information that was sent to me from Sony and some people as well um, they have said as well if you have problems trying to run this program and it's saying you are not connected to the servers like I said most of the problems I knocked out in the beginning of the video such as making sure that your uh, PlayStation is up to date making sure the remote play is activated such like that that should work just fine another thing a really weird hidden one for Windows is you need to have Windows Media Player turned on or activated and if you don't you need to turn that on install it or make sure it's not disabled a lot of people disable it because it's a obsolete media player nowadays um, people mostly use VLC but it needs to be installed and up and running I'm pretty sure the system that Windows uses to run it is the Windows media so make sure you have Windows media player installed on your device um, I already explained the no sharing so if you are using if you are borrowing PlayStation Plus from someone else it does require you to have your own account set as a primary account in order for you to use it if you don't use the primary account if you make sure make sure to check your settings for that that's another reason why I won't let you connect and one of the biggest thing as well is for most people that haven't had the service before if you are playing video games on your remote play whoever is watching TV at home or is in the living room wherever you are at in the house you're streaming on the 
PlayStation from the TV um, will be seeing what is seeing on this screen. So right now, if I'm moving this buttons left and right, my television in my bedroom is doing the same thing. It's not just going to be here only and then my wife could watch television in another room. She will be seeing what I'm seeing. Um, this could be a benefit and a disbenefit. Benefit because if you're playing a game and someone likes leaning over your shoulder, you can have your own private screen so they can look at their own screen and kind of leave you alone. But the D benefit would be the PlayStation is still in full constant use. Um, they would be able to change the channel, of course. That shouldn't affect nothing at all. But if you are using your PlayStation, whoever is watching the PlayStation screen will see exactly what you're playing. So just make note of that as well. Um, other than that, guys, if you guys have any other questions, question comments or concerns please leave them in the comment section down below i'm going to leave a link to everything that you need to do this update and this um, operating system on your pc and mac here um, any other problems that you guys have make sure to leave in the comments below i'm going to leave my reddit link down below most of the problems and a lot of them are being solved on my reddit page so if you want to get a little bit more into detail um, conversation there you'd be able to go ahead and there and click on the link down below and there will be PC and Mac support on there as well. I only have a PC across my computer, so I won't be able to help you guys with any Mac questions. But like I said, go ahead and double check on that link. And thanks for watching, guys. If you guys have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask.